Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to this session on an event study methodology to use in our paper. I'm going to share my PowerPoint for a few details for the event study methodology. Then we can go on about estimating or abnormal returns, given abnormal returns using starter software. So I'm going to share with you my slides. So our presentation is about event study methodology, presentation by Tadu, Isaac Marobe, PhD research fellow from the School of Business Law, University of Agda, in Christian Sange, Norway. Uh, the event study follows uh, our paper published in the Journal of uh, to be Accepted in the Journal of Transport Geography. Uh, our paper is titled uh, Geopolitical, Entertainment and Shipping Stock Returns on Event Study Methodology. It is studied the Israel Hamas conflict, which is done in collaboration with myself. Uh, Jonathan and Fodin from the rest of uh, rest of uh, journalists in Norway. So we are interested in we are using event study methodology to see the effects of how the uh, uncertainty on news of events that uh, transpired during the Israeli Hamas conflict how they affect their stocks of uh, shipping companies from around the world. That's going to be our study. So I'm going to uh, elaborate to detail about what's the event study methodology and how we went about using it in a particular study to this analysis. So what's a... So an event study is a method used to examine the, the company stocks, how the company stocks react to significant events of interest. These events include regulatory changes, major acquisitions, product launches, natural disasters, ending announcements, or political events. So we're going to see now how do company stocks uh, react to different events. In our case, the news about uh, which transpired about uh, Israel in the mass conflict, which took place in 2023, and is still prevailing to date. So let's go through the steps of estimating event study. First of all, you must define a particular event before starting the event study. So the defined event you want to study, such as any report, a product launch, or policy change, or a major announcement. So in our paper, uh, we had a total of seven events that took place during the Israeli mass conflict. For instance, one of the events that we used was the event number one, which was a surprise attack by Hamas and the other armed group from Gaza against Israel on 7th of October 2023. This is one among the seven events that we estimated or studied. Then number two is to determine the event window, which means the period over which we are studying the effects of events on stock prices. Now, this one is composed of two components. Number one is called estimation window. Estimation window means the time period before the event, which is used to estimate expected returns. In our case, we used uh, from 10 to 120 days, which means 120 days and 10 days before on the previous events based on the previous shipping stock event studies. Then we have must what we call event window, which is the period around the event itself, which can range from a few days before to and after the event, which you, in our case, we used uh, 10 days before and 10 days after the event. Now, the point to note is when you want to determine the estimation window and event window, you must go back to literature and lead studies on similar stocks, similar studies, which have been done on similar stocks, so you can see now which kind of event, how long should your event window or estimation window be, because these ones differ according to different uh, types of stocks or sectors. So in our case, we went through some literature on shipping stocks, we study event studies, and we estimated the consensus on the estimation window and event windows itself that we use as a guideline to set our own event estimation window and event window for study. Number three, we must collect data on historical stock price, which means that we must calculate stock returns for these companies. So we collected data on uh, stock prices and calculated returns for 32 shipping stocks from around the world. Uh, then you must gather data pertaining to stock market indices in which your companies are listed because this one is used in uh, further estimations of uh, expected returns. So you must collect data on uh, stock markets or indices in which these companies are listed. For instance, in our case, our sample contains stocks of Nippon Yusen, which is a shipping company from Japan, which means that because this company is listed in Tokyo Stock Exchange, we must, we must collect data on the market index of Stock Exchange. Because later, they're going to be used in estimation of uh, expected returns. 
Also, you must collect data on relevant control variables, for example, film size, value, et cetera, et cetera. Number four, say estimate expected returns. Expected returns means are the returns that will have been expected in the absence of the event. That's the meaning of expected returns, what expected. As, uh, this can be estimated using uh, different models. For example, we can use the mean adjusted returns, or we can use the market model, which employs the regression analysis, or we can use the cap matrix cap to asset pricing model, which uses the fixed adjusted market model to collect expected returns based on stocks data. Uh, in our case, we employed a three factor model by Farm and French. This model calculates expected returns by incorporating the issues like uh, market risk, size, and values as sources of risks that determine the expected returns. It also employs some frame specific uh, variables for each frame size and value to explain the capital asset pricing model. Now, according to size effect, you can see in our stocks with smaller market, smaller capital utilizations are said to provide better returns than those with larger market utilization. And that, that's why it's very important to employ this three factor model because it incorporates their frame specific factors as opposed to other models that we use in the study methodology. Now, according to value impact, stocks with low uh, values, values perform better than those with high book values. Now, the three factor model by Farman and French for the combination of these returns is estimated as follows. You can see the model. So, there it is this model. You can see it, it calculates expected returns of stocks in a particular day by using the risk free rate of the market, then RM, the return of market portfolio, then SBB, small minus big, which is the size factor, HML, high minus low, which is the value factor. And factors which would be beta of i SMB and beta of i HML, the factors and stabilities are loaded from stocks. So you can see this model is somewhat expanded as opposed to the original uh, capital asset pricing model, which would be positive with some other push variables to estimate the event study. The next point is calculate abnormal returns. Abnormal returns are the difference between the actual returns and the returns during the event movement. So this one calls them abnormal returns. Okay. You can see the difference between the actual returns during a particular day and the exceeded returns during the event window. What is what we call them abnormal returns. Where you can see the formula for abnormal returns, where the actual returns, okay, from i of i is t, or beta and alpha are specific parameters of stock i, so that we find a different factor model, and this one for the actual actual returns. So this one is a very important point because you must calculate abnormal returns based on the after, after occurrence of the event. What are the actual returns of the stocks based on the expected what are expected? The difference is called abnormal returns. Then we must calculate something called uh, average, calculate average of normal returns, which is a sample average of uh, average returns at time t for n sample frames using the formula that the formula is given. Then we proceed to calculate what is called CAAR, which is cumulative average of normal returns, which is, is used to uh, evaluate the overall impact of the event by summing uh, abnormal average of normal returns over a specific period. As you can see, the formula is given there. Normal returns are the average. Normal returns of stock I on 20 fund by subtracting expected returns from actual returns, the aggregate of normal endings of stock appearing in the event window as shown. Then the last one is going to be after statistical testing, after calculating AR and CR, it means that you must perform statistical tests to test whether the abnormal returns are significant or not. Now you can use T test or you can use our sign range test for non parameter test with our assumptions. FCR between the determine the deviation of AR of the company stock. Time i, one, and the i of the same stock in time two, the difference between in day number of days of number of returns in day one and number of returns in day two. Okay, so how we calculate the uh, easy returns. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we went about conducting event study methodology. We're going to focus on event number three, which event number three in our case was Israel begins an invasion of Gaza Strip by launching a large scale round assault. That's an event. Now we conduct uh, the analysis drawing an example of AMP molar. In my case, and D Northern A's companies that to come cheap, big up, biggest company shipping companies in the world, we are going to use a software called Starter. Now, this event took place on 28th of October 2023. The estimation window based from 120 to 10 days. Event window from 10 days to next 10 days after the event. Then the model is going to be the pharma and French model. So I'm going to demonstrate this using Stata. How we can do go about using Stata to do this one. So let me share my screen.
Je vais le Yes. C'est good. As you can see, let's go to data editor. As you can see, in my data editor, I uploaded the uh, time series data from two companies, Marisk and Dnode. Uh, you can see this column is for Marisk returns, it's dates. This one is for Dnode. This one is for the stock index in which these companies are listed. This one are the, the models, it's free rate, HTML, SVM, and mark free rate, which are used in the three, five, three Format different free factor model. You can see the ones that are used. I already declared this data to be time series, so you can revisit the, the starter commands on how to declare data to be time series, but it's already done. So I already uploaded this data, it's already declared this time series. Now to estimate, uh, in order to estimate, to do event study, let me share another screen. As you can see here, my command, you have two companies here, you have Maskey, you have Dnode, stock market, you have the stock index, and you have these rates, there, which are using the factor models. So now we're going to estimate the, we're going to estimate now the, the events, that we're going to do event study on event number three. Now to do that, you need a, a command called e-study. e-study is a command which is used in startup to do event study methodology. So let me copy and paste the command. Here, then I'm going to demonstrate to show you to explain. Now, this is my command. As you can see, it's called eStudy. eStudy, you must install this one. So, eStudy, then you're, you put your companies here. You have two companies with MySki, with Dnode. Then, date variable, date variable is daily. As you can see, this one is daily. I'll study here. Event date is 28th of October 2023. Just write it here. Uh, lower bound number one, event is our event window, event window. 10 days before the event, 10 days after the event. Then we go to estimation window. Estimation window, lower bound is 120 days, and upper bound is 10 days before the event. Uh, date format is day, month, and year. Okay, index list. Now, because we're using three factor model, now we have to include the three factors which are using factor models market free rate, ACMB, and the HML. They must be included. Then model type, MFM. Then must and get show the values. Then you can enter. Now you can see the, the results. The event study is common event date. You can see the event date, it's only event. You can see the cumulative average of normal returns are negative and significant, as you can see. Significant as 0 0.01 as for MySki and Dnode, and also for groups of two securities, all of them are significant. Showing that this event, this event was significant enough to cause a number of returns in uh, both stocks of MySki and Dnode. So this event was Actually, this event was actually the negative event, negative effects on the stocks of Marisk and did not put a significant one. So doing, when we did different events, we found that some events were not significant enough to cause a, a change or to cause a cumulative of number of returns, but this one was significant. The invasion of uh, Israel or, or to uh, Gaza, uh, these events to the ship com com shipping companies was somehow significant in this case. So you can estimate that. You can see now these are negative, negative, and it's very significant. It show that this event had significant effect or not. Yeah. Then we can go about, let's just put another command here. See the command. There's the command. Now I want uh, no p values, I want the graphs, the graph. So at, at the end of the formula MFM, I'm going to put graph from 10, 10 days after the event. See the graphs. How did I want to be the graphs? Yeah. See, that is graph number one. Call for a group. We need the number of times for the group, as you can see. Uh, before the events, after the events, you can see what happened. What securities? Okay. The securities. That one is for Dnode. As you can see for Dnode, what happened in Dnode, you can see this is the event day. What happened that you can see now the effect, the effect, the duration, get a number of times of uh, uh, the date of the events. You can see what happened here. Okay. Share another one. Uh, 
this one is for my skin. Okay, you can see before 10 days before the event and uh, days of the event, you can see what is the trend of this cloth, you can see what happened, uh, the behavior of Kimberto, number of times, the percentage, what happened during the event. So you can see now this can demonstrate how significant this event was uh, among these shipping stocks. So the essence of venture study methodology to show the uh, uh, effects of or different events on uh, stocks. So an economic tool which is used most in the financial parametrics, financial studies, to estimate uh, short-term effects of uh, different events, different events on uh, stocks. In this case, we focus on the shipping sector. The shipping sector, uh, you can, you can look, if you look at the Israel and the Hamas conflict, you can see that it affected the uh, shipping trains and the Swiss Canal. Which means that or deem that it's going to be able to ramifications on the shipping operations as well, inducing fear in the stocks or all investors of the shipping companies. So as you can see, different events. We did a total of seven events. Some of some of these events had uh, significant effects. Some of them did have significant effects. As you can see, the one which uh, after the invasion of Israel on Hamas had an immense effect on two of the biggest shipping companies in the world. So I implore you to use event study methodology. It's a good method to estimate estimate the uh, Estimate the effects of different events on stocks. So, if you want a new study, you can employ it. We also did a study on COVID 19, COVID 19 and shipping stocks, and how different announcements during the pandemic affected the stocks of different shipping companies. So, thank you for your attention.